Hey, what is going on guys? Slick Joe here. Hoping you guys are having a fantastic day and welcome back to another episode of Zombies Weekly. The show I do every week where I tell you guys all the cool zombies news that is going on in the community. And today we have a pretty interesting show with Lee Ross dropping some more hints on Twitter as well as Brian Bright and a few other interesting things. So if you do enjoy this video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you are new. I would really appreciate it a whole damn lot. Let's see if we can hit 15 likes on this video. You guys always do. So go ahead and smash that like button and let's get right into the video. So like I said, Lee Ross is dropping some more hints on his Twitter account. He seems to be very active on Twitter, which is nice to see. It is good that he's dropping a lot of hints on there. And the first tweet starts off with, he says, just watch the final mix for the Rave in the Redwoods trailer. This next week is going to be scary good fun. Of course, the sunglasses emoji, hashtag Rave in the Redwoods. So, obviously, the trailer for Rave in the Redwoods is complete, and we are going to be getting it next week, which I guess by the time you're watching this video now means this week, which is really exciting. We have been waiting a long time for this trailer and the intro cutscene, and hopefully we get those sooner towards the beginning of this week than later. That would be really nice. I'm excited to see them, and I hope you guys are too. And which leads me into the next tweet that I want to talk about. The day after that, Lee Ross tweeted another picture, and he said, First frame from the new Zombies intro cinematic. Hashtag rave in the redwoods and he tweeted a picture It's a black screen and it says previously on zombies dot 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 now Obviously, this is a little bit of a boring screenshot from the intro cutscene But it does actually give us a lot of information about it So that does confirm that the ending cutscene for zombies in spaceland is going to be some sort of like combined intro cutscene for rave in the redwoods It's going to kind of recap what happened in zombies in spaceland and then tell us what is going to be going on in Raven the Redwoods, kind of introing that and outroing zombies in Spaceland at the same time in one big cutscene, which I think is going to be really cool. Someone actually in the comments of one of my videos did uh, predict this. They said maybe that this will happen, and they were right. So it looks like this is going to be what we're going to be seeing for Raven the Redwoods, and maybe this is what we're going to see for every map. I guess we'll know if we don't get an ending cutscene for Raven the Redwoods, then probably in the next map we're going to be getting the same kind of recap from the previous map and then dive into the next map that we're going to be getting. And I think this is a cool tactic. Now, the other way this could go is maybe that they got rid of the ending cutscene in Zymes and Spaceland and they just did this kind of recap idea because, like I said in the previous video, if you want to check that out, link will be in the description. The ending cutscene for Zombies in Spaceland might be the ending cutscene for the whole Zombies mode for Infinite Warfare Zombies. Maybe at the end of the fourth map, you have to come back to Zombies in Spaceland, do something, and that activates like the almost like ultimate ending cutscene. But who knows, I guess we'll just have to wait and see, and we'll be getting a little more information as we get maps th throughout the DLC season, because we will obviously know if they have outro cutscenes or if that is going to be a new thing where they recap it in the intro for the next map. Now on to the next tweet, which is another really interesting one. Lee Ross tweeted, a little more of that Raven the Redwoods poster you wanted to see. Another sunglasses emoji, hashtag Rave in the Redwoods, and we get a screen cap. It looks like the top of the Rave in the Redwoods poster. It says, back from the grave and ready to rave. And this is a picture of this creepy looking something. Looks almost like a, f I don't even know. Some creepy looking like scarecrow kind of looking thing. It's got two X's on its eyes. It's got like a scary looking mouth and everything and someone commented on that and said is that your bag with your lunch in it and lee ross replied to them and said only if your bag wants to cut your head off so maybe this is the first look we're getting at the slasher i think there was a couple of other tweets where someone asked him if this was a slasher and he just put the sunglasses emoji and that was it so this is looking like this is our first look at the slasher and it does look pretty creepy and kind of weird i don't know why it's smiling that's even more creepy and the fact that he said it wants to cut your head off, that sounds like something the slasher would do. So it looks like this is our first look at that, which is going to be the new boss zombie in Rave of the Redwoods that replaces like the brew. So that is pretty exciting. We're getting a look at that. And yeah, I think it looks like a pretty cool poster and I'm excited for him to show us the rest of it. Now switching gears over to Brian Bright on Twitter, he dropped a little bit of a hint himself. And a couple days ago... Someone asked him, ready for Raven the Redwoods, is the soundtrack all original or will we have some 90s tunes in the mix? Keep up the great work. And Brian Bright responded and said, soundtrack is early 90s rave and club music. There are some real bangers. And then a couple days later, he tweeted a picture of this weird purple symbol. And if you drop this symbol into an image search in Google, it comes up with Rabbit in the Moon, which is a American electronic music group. Their style draws from psychedelic trance, house music, and breakbeat along with other diverse influences. So that looks like that is either going to be what the music in Rave the Redwoods is like or what it actually is. It might be this band or whatever this music group is that has the music for Rave in the Redwoods. So if you guys want to check that out, you can go probably find their music and see what it sounds like and everything like that. But it sounds like it's going to be some 
kind of creepy, almost raver kind of club music, which I think will be pretty cool and fit the whole theme well. Now, onto that mysterious image you guys saw in the thumbnail. A couple days ago, someone on Reddit had discovered a new screenshot of Rave in the Redwoods that they found in the game memory. I will link the original Reddit post down below if you want to check that out, but it is this image. It looks like it's some sort of dock. There's like a little boat. There's some water, like a lake around it, and that cabin up towards the top left of the screen. It's got some fog in there, and it looks really, really cool, and this is definitely a part of the map we have never seen before. Also, things to point out right away. I'm wondering, I see that boat there, so I'm wondering if maybe that will be some sort of transportation system around the map. Maybe you can get in the boat, and that's sort of like some way you can get across the map. Maybe you can get in the boat, and it takes you around to like another part or I'm not really sure but I'm thinking it's most likely that we could probably ride that boat. I think that'd be a really cool idea and I don't see why they would have this screenshot if this doesn't mean anything to, to the map. This must be significant if there's a screenshot of it so I'm thinking that riding the boat is a very very likely thing and I think that'd be really awesome to see. I just wonder what else it's going to entail while you're trying to ride this boat. Can zombies swim in the water and come and get in the boat? How's that going to work? I think that's going to be really cool and interesting, and I can't wait to find more out about that. And I'm sure we'll find more out about that in the trailer that's coming up in this live stream that we're going to be getting on Tuesday. All right, now on to our last story of the day. I just wanted to talk quick about a video that Glitching Queen made. She made a video where it says you can double pack punch guns without doing the main Easter egg. There's a little kind of glitch she found out on how to do that. I don't know if it's been patched yet. I don't think it has because she just made it a few days ago. So if you want to check that out, I'll leave a link for that in the description. You can double pack punch your guns without having to do the main Easter egg. You just need like a Fate and Forge card and a couple of other steps to do it. It's not too bad or too hard to do. So if you want to check that out, like I said, link in the description. But yeah, guys, that has been this week's episode of Zombies Weekly. Let me know down in the comments below what you think of Brave and the Redwoods so far and everything we know. Are you excited for the map? Are you not really feeling the hype too much and you don't really care? Or are you just kind of neutral and you're just like, eh, whatever, excited to see what's going to be, but you're not too hyped about it? Let me know in the comments below. I'd really like to hear what you guys are thinking. Leave a like and subscribe if you did enjoy. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I better be seeing you in the next video. Catch you later.